Persistence is one of those things that you can develop with practice. Believe me, everyone can be impatient. Everyone has their breaking point where they just lose it. Patience is not something that comes easy for everyone, and not when you're so used to getting things instantly. Messages, tweets, downloads, you name it. It's all instant. So let's start here. What are some things that you have to wait for? And I mean longer than 30 seconds. I'm not talking about your microwave meals. What are things that you have to wait for? What about people? Who are the people you have to wait for? I'm wondering if there are any times that it's just better to wait instead of rushing ahead. I wonder, could there be things we miss out on or give up by not waiting? That's an interesting question, isn't it? For questions like this, it's good to consider answers you might find in the Bible. Let's head there now. Our story today comes from Genesis, the first book of the Bible. It includes the stories that are all about the beginning of God's people, uh, the Israelites. In order to help me tell this story, I found this bin of random props in the back. Hopefully, there's some in here that'll work. See, God called a man named Abraham to follow him. God promised Abraham that his family would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. And that family started with a son named Isaac. We pick up the story when Isaac was a grown man with kids of his own. God helped Isaac find an amazing woman named Rebecca, and uh, they got married. No, no, that's not it. Aha! Wedded bliss! God decided to bless Isaac and Rebekah with twin boys. The time had come for Rebekah to have her twins. Does anybody out there maybe have twin siblings or maybe you are a twin? Maybe you can relate. Uh, Rebekah with Isaac at her side gave birth to the first of her twins. The first baby, though, was completely red. Kind of like this. Not only was he completely red, but his whole body was covered in hair head to toe, like this. And because he was red and covered with hair, they decided to name him Esau. The Hebrew word Esau means, you guessed it, uh, red. And they're not very creative in the naming department, all Isaac and Rebecca, but the next twin was born immediately after, doing something really strange. This baby was actually holding on to Esau's foot. See, the second twin's name was Jacob, which means to follow or it could actually be derived from the Hebrew word for heel. So, ah, oh, there's my other shoe. So after the creative naming session had ended, Isaac and Rebecca took a look at the double blessings from God in their arms. Two boys, two amazing boys who would grow up covered in love, and one of them covered in hair. But the boys grew up, uh, Esau, like his dad, loved the outdoors. Even from an early age, Esau would accompany his father on hunting trips, to gather food for the family. Esau became a really skilled hunter. On the other hand, Jacob wasn't too fond of the outdoors. He was kind of a homebody. He liked to stay inside and he liked to cook. So, since Esau liked hunting and being outside and wild animals, his father Isaac kind of liked him a little bit more. However, since Jacob loved to hang out at home, cooking and helping around the house, Rebecca was fond of Jacob. Each parent had their favorite, but it's important to know something about families back then, specifically about something in families called the birthright. Birthright was something incredibly special and important handed down to the firstborn son. In this case, since Esau was born first, it was his to inherit. But what exactly was it? What in the world is a birthright? So the birthright meant that the firstborn would become the head of the family and would receive a greater inheritance than his siblings. So, mo' money. This birthright was Esau's and his alone. So one day, after a hard day of hunting in the open country, Esau came home and plopped his bow down on the table. He then smelled something really, really delicious. His stomach started to growl, and he went into the kitchen to find Jacob cooking Esau's favorite stew. Oh, I guess that's it. Chicken noodle. So Esau said to Jacob, quick, I'm really hungry. Let me have some of that red stew. Jacob, however, was pretty clever, and he knew that he was the second born. And the second born kid didn't get as much as the first born kid. It's the firstborn kids who get the birthright. 
In a quick turn, Jacob said, okay, no problem. Stew's coming right up. But first, sell me that right that belongs to you as the oldest in the family. So the line had been drawn, the counter offer made, a huge inheritance with wealth and power for some stew. Esau said, look, I'm dying of hunger. What good are those rights to me right now? Jacob persisted, I'll give you the stew, but first promise to sell me your rights. And then in a fit of incredible impatience, Esau promised to do it. He sold Jacob all the rights that belonged to him as the oldest son for a bowl of stew. Mo money. So Jacob slid Esau a hot steaming bowl of stew. Esau slurped it up and then without a second thought, wiped his mouth and got up and left. Esau didn't value the rights that belonged to him as the oldest son at all. Esau was probably one of the most impatient people mentioned in the Bible. I mean, he had everything to gain and nothing to lose if he would have just waited. Instead, he let his hungry stomach do all the thinking. Now, we might roll our eyes at Esau, wondering how he could possibly do something this crazy. But before we pass judgment, we probably need to take a look at ourselves. In life, we'll all face times when we're more likely to lose it due to our impatience. In fact, it's easy to remember with the word halt. When you're starting to get impatient, ask yourself if you're halt, hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. If you answer yes to any one of those, chances are it'll be difficult for you to be patient. See, Esau's problem was that he was hungry. He was probably pretty tired after being out hunting all day, and he didn't think about what was at stake if he didn't wait. Think about when you're hungry and you find yourself getting hangry. You become grumpy, maybe a little short-tempered. What about when you're already angry or feeling lonely? Or another time when you're primed to snap when you're super, super tired? When you're faced with being patient or rushing ahead, think about all you can gain if you just wait. If you lose your temper, you're missing out on what's best. Plus, chances are, the impatience will cause you some trouble. Choose to be patient and trust God. Pray and ask God for help, because God can give you the strength you need to wait. It also helps when you're having trouble waiting to find someone you trust and talk to them about it. It really does help. So, our key question, what could you miss out on by not waiting? What things could you experience if you slowed down and took your time? And how much more present-minded would you be instead of always jumping ahead and wanting to get to the end or answer or the answer or the prize? I know you'll come up with the right answer. We'll see you guys next time.